Now, your phone knows more than you do. No? <laughs> I don't need to memorize things to write them on a test. You don't realize when you're going through high school and you're speaking to your guidance counselor and what are your career options when you leave. And it's always, it seems, black and white. You know, you're a doctor, lawyer, yeah. engineer. Then there's the intersections of where these different new jobs are finding its way. So for example, you know, I have a girlfriend who started a skincare company with a foundation in chemistry. I definitely think the structure of university could definitely be changed and altered towards teaching people about like the gig economy and like how that works. Not every kid is gonna grow up and wanna be like, I wanna get a job that'll be the same for 40 years. I think a lot of people are more interested in moving around now and traveling and being wherever they wanna be while working. As an individual, if you wanna find the resources to learn about these new jobs, you definitely can. You have to almost go out of your way to look for these new skills that you want to learn and build. And you might study something completely different in university, and down the line you might find that intersection yeah. of where they actually collide with one another, but that's not going to be in a handbook somewhere. 80% of learning happens outside of the classroom. So like, what are kids doing outside of school after their, you know, their homework's done, once they come back home? Kids really early on, like when they're 12, 13, starting to think like, what can I do that is a passion project or something entrepreneurial that can like further something that I'm really interested in for the future. Passion projects are amazing because they actually give the student a purpose other than I want to get a high grade on this. I learned everything on my own. My community on social media began with 300 people and now we're at 1.5 million. No one taught me how to do that. I had to learn on my own. I see the initiatives that are being put in place to equip students with 21st century skills and inquiry-based learning and and innovation and focusing on engagement and all of that and then I see the gap in what our policies say versus what we actually do to prepare our kids. And at the same time I see a blessing in these gaps because it pushes every person on their own to say, if I want to really follow my dreams or my passion, then I will have to learn these things on my own and sometimes the way that you learn it is what makes you who you are. As an athlete, it's very unique as well because, you know, I went to school, I got a, a commerce degree and I was thinking, okay, I'm gonna be finished, my school, but I'm also training for the Olympics. When am I gonna have the time to work? It's, it's really tough and how I've found it is, yeah, through YouTube videos and, and I took marketing. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna have to jump out of my comfort zone and learn how to market myself. Mm -hmm. I have had major sponsors and it's because of the hard skills I learned in university but it's also because of the skills that I kind of developed on my own as a result of being put in an uncomfortable situation. So if we were to focus on giving them resilience skills, vulnerability, not being afraid to actually try new things not knowing where it's going to get, if we were to actually instill those values in our students, I feel that it would change what they do after they leave high school and then after they leave university. The education path I had in Calgary was very inquiry-based learning, where they never rank on the answer that you got, but more on the work you produced to get to an answer. Oh, that's cool. um, so the marks that we got was entirely based on our thought process as opposed to did we actually get the answer right. That coupled, I think, with debate and public speaking and model United Nations that are offered in most schools, that definitely helped me with critical thinking. It helped me with active listening. It helped me you know, figure out how to work with other people. I don't think it's something that, you can't just be a kid that goes to school and expects to get it all. I feel like yeah. you have to seek it out. Mm -hmm. But those opportunities, I feel like in most schools, are there. That's awesome. It's so incredibly important to find something that you're passionate about so you can learn these skills. I completely agree. Like, find your passion. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't found it, that's OK. Challenge yeah. yourself and do the things that make you afraid. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like that. Being well-rounded is that balancing the uh, intellectual brain, the creative brain, you're open to anything and you're taking new things on. Being well-rounded also means you have like a larger appreciation for like a wider scope of topics and their history behind it. So having a decent amount of skills, both technical and hands-on. I think being well-rounded is balancing professional development and personal development. So sure, you can be very specialized towards what your career is, 
but learning to not only be a good human, but learning how to take care of yourself, how to feel a sense of community, yeah. and know that your position uh, is something that other people might aspire towards and that you can teach them how to get to that position. Aim to break stereotypes. Don't let yourself be defined by a single definition. And I feel when you do that, you automatically start to become well-rounded because you're trying not to be labeled.